Okay, so creatine monohydrate. So creatine monohydrate is a type of creatine. Uh, it is the creatine that I actually supplement. This is the, the brand that I like. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, so creatine, we're going to talk about some misconceptions. Uh, so some common questions, I guess, not necessarily misconceptions. So some common questions, misconceptions or myths around creatine because there's a lot of uh, like folklore almost around it. And then we're going to talk about how creatine can be leveraged for cognitive brain health and particularly uh, leveraged for concussion. And we'll talk about some of the ways that it can be leveraged for uh, not only just uh, concussion treatment, but also possibly the prevention. Like I think all of my athletes are recommended to take creatine. Uh, there's not a single contact athlete that I don't recommend takes it. And we'll talk about why that is. So uh, let's kick it off with the misconceptions. So uh, there's an article, uh, let me actually pull it up here. It was called Common Questions and Misconceptions about Creatine Supplementation. What does the scientific evidence really show? It was from the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition, published in uh, 2021. And so it was a cool study because it had over 200, or had, I think, exactly 200 references to look at this. And they went through 12 different myths and misconceptions. And a lot of them were kind of like one of them in particular is really silly. But I think it's important to lay these out because people can have hesitancy, uh, especially my females uh, that come into my practice have hesitancy. Like, won't that make me big? Won't that make me gain weight? Won't that make me do X, Y, or Z? Um, and uh, the answer is most of the time, no. <clears throat> so let's break it down. So I've got my per usual my notes here. Uh, so they broke down 12. I made it into a list of 10 because some of them just kind of clumped together. Uh, so the first one is creatine does not always lead to water retention. Uh, where that came from is that uh, early on, people are told to take a loading dose of creatine, so around 20 grams a day. And with that, you might see a transient increase in, in body water, uh, but that doesn't pan out long term. So you don't always gain a boatload of water weight. Um, creatine is not an anabolic steroid, and this is just a silly one because, of course, it's not. So creatine is actually made up of the three amino acids. Uh, coming together, so arginine, methionine, and glycine to create a molecule called methylguanidine acetic acid. And instead of calling it methylguanidine acetic acid, we call it creatine. Um, a steroid, an anabolic steroid in particular, is like a, a testosterone analog. And so that is a, a multi-ring structure rather than like an amino acid structure. So just biochemically, creatine is not a steroid. So that's kind of a silly uh, misconception. Um, the other one, so the third one down the list would be creatine does not damage your kidneys. Um, if you have healthy kidneys and you're taking normal doses of creatine for normal amounts of time, uh, meaning three to five grams indefinitely or 20 uh, grams for less than two, you know, one to two weeks, uh, then you're fine. Your kidneys are not going to be damaged. Uh, creatine very likely... Uh, so the majority of evidence does not find a correlation between creatine supplementation and hair loss. And that actually makes me happy because like this, you know, keeps getting worse and worse as I get older. Um, but what we, the reason we know that or assume that is because creatine doesn't really affect dihydrotestosterone, so DHT levels all that much. And that's what's involved in this kind of male pattern um, hair loss and baldness. Um, creatine, similar to the kind of total body water flippy floppy thing is that uh, creatine doesn't cause dehydration. It doesn't cause muscle cramping. Uh, creatine doesn't increase fat mass. And then when we're thinking about different populations, creatine is often limited to like uh, gym bros and like men in the gym. Uh, and it actually is probably uh, very much, according to the evidence, safe for children, for adolescents, for women uh, across the entire lifespan. Uh, so meaning like pre-pregnancy, pregnancy, lactation, that sort of thing. Uh, and then the elderly. Uh, I don't know why people thought the elderly couldn't take creatine. It probably came back to the kidneys. Uh, but particularly when paired with exercise, we see uh, awesome benefits in uh, elderly folks supplementing with creatine. Uh, it's useful for a variety of activities, not just strength and power. We find uh, neurocognitive benefits. We find some endurance benefits. It's not just if you're going to like ah, max out on a bench. Um, and then in terms of dosing, uh, like I mentioned before, there's a loading dose that people used to take uh, 20 grams for 20 grams a day for about a week. So for most supplements, that'd be about four scoops every day um, for a week. And then they would drop to a maintenance dose of three to five grams a day. And the idea was that you needed that to really kind of super load your muscles and get them to uh, to take up the creatine. And what we know now is that if you just consistently take three to five grams a day, 
you don't need that loading dose. The only time you really need a loading dose is say you're trying to prepare for a competition or something where you want that muscle creatine uh, and that competition is less than 30 days away. Um, and so the last one here is that there are different types of creatine. So there is um, uh, buffered creatine and there's, I can't think of them right now off the top of my head, but there's creatine monohydrate. So creatine monohydrate uh, is kind of the oldest, uh, most studied version. Nothing appears to be really superior in terms of absorption or, or really anything like that. Um, so if you're going to get a creatine supplement, get a creatine monohydrate. Um, like I was saying, so right now, Thorn Creatine is my favorite brand. Uh, it is affordable. It's accessible. Um, you can get this. So uh, if you go to my link tree or my link in my bio on any of my social media, you can find my full script dispensary. And so you can actually buy this full disclosure. I, I don't mean to hide this at all. If you buy something from my dispensary, you do get a 10% discount and I do get a small commission on that. And that commission just kind of helps me maintain my website and stuff like that. I'm not rolling in money because of uh, creatine. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is uh, my current favorite. If Designs for Sport comes out with a creatine, that will probably move into my new favorite. I just like Designs for Health and Designs for Sport as a company. Uh, but this is NSF certified. Uh, athletes can take it and pee and feel safe about that. Um, so quick comment here before I move on to what it does for the brain. So. Thank you for going into more depth. The protein powder I'm using has those three amino acids. Awesome, yeah, so your protein powder um, should have like a complete amino acid profile. Um, so you can make your own creatine. And uh, when I say can make it, your body can make it. And what's really cool is as we get into brain and cognition, your brain actually really, really tightly regulates um, its creatine levels. So you actually make creatine in your brain and it's a very um, kind of strict and tight mechanism. So how would supplementing it help? Uh, what we find is that you got to supplement high doses. And so why would we want to do this? And why does it make sense in concussion? If you go back to many of my videos, I talk about how concussion is this injury where you stretch and shear and kind of uh, cause uh, not overt damage, but we call it functional damage because the stretching and shearing, you're not going to see on MRI, you're not going to see on CT. But as we do that, electrolytes go everywhere. And it's this excitotoxic phase. It's when Patrick Mahomes is stumbling. It's when Tua uh, goes ataxic and falls, or even when he has that decorticate posturing. That's this excitotoxic phase uh, because you stretched, you sheared, electrolytes go everywhere. And now you got to clean that up. You got to put the electrolytes back. One way that I describe it is like if you dumped glitter on the carpet and then you got to pick up that glitter by hand and you want to make sure you get every piece. Um, it takes a lot of energy and it takes some time. And so we see that this energy deficit after concussion lasts about uh, 21 days, about three weeks, maybe four weeks. Um, and so where creatine comes in is creatine is an energy molecule or it's a precursor to create energy. Um, so when creatine comes into your blood, uh, this enzyme creatine kinase attaches a phosphate to it. So you have creatine phosphate. And then anytime you want to make ATP, adenosine triphosphate, you get a diphosphate, so ADP. You add a phosphate to it from the creatine, you get ATP. So creatine phosphate, ATP, creatine phosphate, ATP. And it's independent of mitochondria, which were kind of overloaded in the concussion. It's independent of a whole bunch of enzyme systems. So it's just really quick energy. Um, and so we like that. And in concussion, when we have this energy deficit, what we find is that supplementing creatine can actually give your brain some energy that it can use independent of the mitochondrial systems, independent of these other uh, glycolytic systems and, and multi-enzyme systems to produce energy. You can just dump in creatine and create energy. Um, and so a lot of my patients, when uh, after a concussion, they'll read blogs and they'll read things and they're taking turkey tail and they're taking uh lion's mane and they're taking curcumin and they're taking omega-3s and then creatine comes in and this is the one they feel uh and it's because of that energy metabolism benefit uh when we go into well like what does it do there was a study let me pull up the name of it again here sorry i'm flipping between <laughs> screens uh, so this one was very simply called creatine supplementation and brain health in the journal nutrients and i believe there were 63 references for this um, and so they were just looking at what do we know about creatine supplementation and cognition. And generally speaking, we're looking at doses between uh, 5 grams a day to 20 grams a day for anywhere from these studies. We're looking anywhere from five days uh, to 24 weeks. When you're getting into the weeks and weeks and weeks, like beyond two weeks, 
that's when you want to get down to like kind of the five grams per day dosing. Um, always talk with your doctor about dosing. This is not an, uh, uh, an alternative to professional medical advice from someone who knows your history, your labs, your, you know, your case. Uh, but generally speaking, when we're taking three to five grams a day, it's for that long term. And when we're taking 15, 20 grams a day, it's for no longer than one to two weeks. Um, and so, so that's kind of that. Uh, and what we find in the TBI space is we find that uh, a, a particular TBI case uh, with studies with kids is we find that there's improvements in, this is kind of cool, there's, there's improvements in cognition, in communication, in self-care, in personality, in behavior. There's a decrease in headaches, in dizziness, and fatigue. So when we look at these symptoms of concussion, creatine kind of knocks them all out because of this energy support. And when we're looking at the kind of what I, to circle back, the brain has this tightly regulated creatine metabolism. So to boost brain creatine levels, humans, animals can do it about 30% from supplementation. Humans can do it about 10%. So if you want to boost your brain levels about 10%, you've got to be taking these 10 to 20 milligram doses for that short one to two weeks at a time, which actually works perfect in concussion rehab because for that one to two weeks, let's load up your creatine. And then in that last week, let's just fine tune the rehab to make sure you're ready to return to play, return to work whatever. Um, but we can support that energy while we're doing it. Um, in addition to providing energy, going back to the excitotoxicity, uh, it'll minimize some of the calcium influx that we see with concussion. It can minimize some of the mitochondrial dysfunction. It can minimize some of the oxidative stress and inflammation. Uh, so it tends to be this great like all around supplement. So it's one of my favorites because it is so safe, so affordable, so accessible, so useful uh, across the the lifespan across men and women kids and elderly um and there's even there's benefits that we didn't even talk about today um so that's kind of the recap on creatine there's a whole bunch of myths that we covered in the beginning you can circle back to that um i will go back in the description and edit so i can reference these papers and you can actually click on the links and read them yourselves um but yeah big picture creatine uh, helping with cognitive physical emotional symptoms, doing all kinds of things for not only your energy metabolism, but inflammation um, and that sort of thing. Uh, so I'm going to go over to the chat and see. I saw a couple questions pop up. Um, is there any foods you can use or only the supplements? Uh, yeah, so uh, meat. Uh, so really, uh, meat is where you're going to find creatine. Uh, when you're looking at doses for like cognition, so when you're looking at uh, 10, 20, you know, 15 grams a day, you're going to have to supplement, throw in a scoop of something. Uh, but when we're looking at kind of the maintenance dosing, so one of the things you'll see in the research, like with athletic performance is you've got uh, creatine non-responders. So people who take creatine and nothing really happens. Um, and these are people who usually have an omnivore diet or a diet with meat in it. And they've got creatine levels that are sufficient enough that supplementation really doesn't move the needle that much further. Um, so foods, uh, yeah, uh, foods with muscles. Muscles have creatine, muscles use creatine. So um, that that kind of answers that. And then what do I mix the powder with? Uh, do I mix it with juice? I will mix creatine personally. So, uh, oh, one thing we didn't talk about in uh, personal use is we've got evidence that higher doses of creatine can actually offset some of the deficits of sleep deprivation. Um, so poor nights of sleep, take some creatine, you have some improved neurocognitive benefits. Uh, so when my daughter was born and even now just being an entrepreneur, doctor, husband, father, kind of juggling that, I don't always get the best sleep. Um, and so I will throw this into my coffee. Um, and so what I'll do is I don't necessarily make a bulletproof coffee, um, but I'll take a cold brew or, you know, coffee, something like that. I'll throw in a scoop of my protein. Uh, I use a paleo protein from Designs for Health. Um, I throw in Usually if it's a bad night, <laughs> I'll throw in two scoops of creatine and kind of mix that together into my coffee. And um, with the protein powder, it creates kind of just like a thicker, you're drinking a protein shake anyway. Otherwise I throw it into my morning smoothies. Um, and those are kind of the two places I get the creatine is in my smoothies. So I don't really feel it or taste it because it's kind of gritty. Um, and then in my coffee, uh, if I, if I take, if I drink coffee, um, personally, if I drink coffee more than three to four times a week, I start to get anxious and, uh, my recovery, my autonomic recovery isn't so great. Um, so I usually two to three times a week and the rest of the time I'm throwing it in smoothies. Um, I do have some pa patients that just kind of mix it in water and shoot it. Uh, but it's not, it's kind of gritty. It doesn't have the best taste. Uh, one thing to know is when you do get to these cognitive doses, when you start taking like 10 or more grams a day, 
once you hit that 10 gram mark or start to pass it, taking it in one bolus dose might cause some GI symptoms, some gurgling and some like um, not so good feeling. Um, so if you are gonna take 20 grams a day, I usually say, hey, have 10 grams of breakfast, 10 grams of lunch. Uh, but again, talk with your doctors. This does not replace medical advice. Um, I'm a doctor, but I may not be your doctor if you're watching this. Um, all right, so I think that is that. I don't know if we don't have any more questions.